We now learn how to factor quadratic equations by splitting the middle term. And we're going to do so with a couple of examples. The first example is we need to factor 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. Now, to factor a quadratic by splitting the middle term, we can follow five steps. The first step, I'll just write 1 here, is to multiply the leading coefficient with the constant term. Now, in this quadratic equation, as with any quadratic equation, the leading coefficient is the number multiplying the x squared, so that's 2 here, and the constant term is the number without an x, so that would be 3. So, in our first step, we multiply 2 times 3, which equals to 6. And that's our first step done. In our second step, step 2, we need to find two numbers, which we'll call p and q. So I'll just write find p and q, which are factors of 6. 6 being the number we obtained in step 1. So p and q are factors of 6, and we have to find them such that p times q equals to 6. That's this number again. So p times q equals to 6, and p plus q must equal to the coefficient of the middle term. Now, the middle term of any quadratic equation is this one. That's the term with a simple x. And the coefficient is 7. So p plus q must equal to 7. Now, to find these two numbers, p and q, it's often a good idea to list all the pairs of factors of 6. What I mean by pairs of factors is all the pairs of numbers which multiply to give 6. So, for instance, 1 and 6 would be a pair of factors of 6, because 1 times 6 is equal to 6. Another one would be 2 and 3, because 2 times 3 equals to 6, as does 3 times 2. And you'll quickly find those are the only two pairs of factors of 6 that you'll be able to find. Now, looking at each of these two pairs, we want to check whether or not 1 plus or minus the other is equal to 7. Now, if we have 2 and 3, for instance, well, 2 times 3 is definitely equal to 6, so that's good, but 2 plus 3 isn't equal to 7, so it's not 2 and 3. On the other hand, 1 and 6 definitely work, because 1 times 6 is 6, and 1 plus 6 is 7, and that's what we're after. So we can go ahead and write p equals to 1, and q equals to 6. And that's our second step done. Now, I will add that we could have called P6 and Q1. It would make absolutely no difference whatsoever. We now move on to step 3. And in step 3, we split the middle term. Here's what that actually means. The middle term, remember, was this 7x here. And we're going to split it and write it as Px plus Qx where p and q are the numbers we just found in step 2. And so, because p was 1 and q was 6, that would be 1 times x, which is just x, plus 6x. So, let's go ahead and write that. We have 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 equals to 2x squared plus x plus 6x plus 3. And so we've now split the middle term. We move on to step 4, which I'll write up here, step 4. And in step 4, we need to find the highest common factor of the first two terms, 2x squared plus x, and the last two terms, 6x plus 3, of the expression that we found at the end of step 3. Now, to do that, we start by writing each of those two expressions in its factored form. Here's what I mean. We can say that 2x squared plus x in factored form would be x times 2x plus 1. Similarly, we can factor 6x plus 3. In factored form, that's 3 times 2x plus 1. And we notice that both of these expressions inside the parentheses are the same. And that's the highest common factor of these two expressions. So we can now go ahead and state that HCF, highest common factor, equals to 2x 
plus 1. And we now move on to the fifth and final step, step 5, and in step 5 we write the entire quadratic in factored form. So let's go ahead. We had seen that 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 equals to 2x squared plus x plus 6x plus 3. Furthermore, we had seen that 2x squared plus x was equal to x times 2x plus 1. So let's go ahead and write that. That's equal to x times 2x plus 1. And we had also seen that 6x plus 3 was equal to 3 times 2x plus 1. So we write that as well. Plus 3 times 2x plus 1. And now we notice that both of these terms have a common factor, which was 2x plus 1. So we can write this in factored form as 2x plus 1 times all that's left over. That would be x plus 3. So we go ahead and say x plus 3 in parentheses. And we're done. We've just factored this quadratic by splitting the middle term. Let's look at another example. As a second example, let's say we're given the quadratic 3x squared minus 8x plus 4. And once more, we need to write this quadratic in its factored form. Well, to do that, we use the method of splitting the middle term, and we do that in five steps. Remember, step 1, we need to multiply the leading coefficient, that would be 3, with the constant term, which is the term without an x, so that's 4. So our step 1 is to calculate 3 times 4, which equals to 12. Done. Our step 2 is to find two factors of 12, which is this number we found in step 1, two factors that we call p and q, so I'll just write find p and q, such that p times q equals to 12, and their sum, p plus q, equals to the coefficient of the middle term. Well, in this case, the middle term is negative 8x, so the coefficient is negative 8. So p plus q must equal to negative 8. Now, to begin with, we'll start just by looking for pairs of factors of 12. So those would be, well, 1 and 12, since 1 times 12 is 12. We'd also have 2 and 6, since 2 times 6 is 6 times 2 equals 12. And we'd have 3 and 4, since 3 times 4 equals to 12. And those are all the pairs of factors of 12 that we'll find. But now, an important thing to realize in this case is that we have p plus q equals to negative 8. As soon as this occurs, or rather, as soon as we're dealing with negative numbers here, we need to consider the possibility that these pairs of factors could be negative. Meaning, we could also have negative 1 and 12, or 1 and negative 12. Or we could have negative 2 and 6, or 2 and negative 6, or even negative 2 and negative 6. All of those scenarios need to be considered as soon as we're looking at negative results here. But now on top of that, we can think a little further. Since we know that p plus q is equal to a negative number, that tells us that at least one of the two, p and q, must be negative. But even more than that, since we know that p times q has to equal to 12, which is positive, the only way that will happen is if they're both negative. In other words, both p and q need to be negative for their product to turn out as positive. So, the pairs of factors we need to consider would be negative 1 and negative 12, negative 2 and negative 6, and negative 3 and negative 4. Now, looking at these pairs of factors, it doesn't take us too long to see that the one that works is negative 2 and negative 6. Indeed, we have negative 2 times negative 6 equals to 12, and we have negative 2 plus negative 6 equals to negative 8, and that is exactly what we were after. So we can go ahead and state that p equals to negative 2 and q equals to negative 6, and that's our second step done. 
Now, I will point out that we could have called p negative 6 and q negative 2. It would make no difference whatsoever. We now move on to step 3, and in step 3, remember, we actually split the middle term. What that means is we can see here that the middle term is negative 8x, and so we can go ahead and say that negative 8x is equal to px plus qx, where p is negative 2 and q is negative 6. So that would be negative 2x minus 6x. And all we're doing there is using the results we found in step 2. So we can go ahead and split the middle term to write 3x squared minus 8x plus 4 equals to 3x squared minus 2x minus 6x plus 4. And that's our third step done. And we now move on to the fourth step, step 4. And in step 4, remember, we need to find the highest common factor of the first two terms we found in the expression in step 3 with the last two terms of the expression. So that's the highest common factor of 3x squared minus 2x and negative 6x plus 4. And to do this, the best way really is to factor each of those two expressions in turn and then compare them. That would be 3x squared minus 2x in factored form is equal to x times 3x minus 2. On the other hand, we have negative 6x plus 4 can be factored as 2 times negative 3x plus 2. But now we notice that we have 3x minus 2, and here we have negative 3x plus 2, and that's the opposite. So, to counteract that, in order to make sure that we have the same expression in these parentheses, we're going to take out a factor of negative 1. That would turn into negative 2 times 3x minus 2. And now we have the same expression in the parentheses in each of these. And we can state hcf equals to 3x minus 2. We now move on to the fifth and final step, step 5, and we factor the entire quadratic. And so we say that 3x squared minus 8x plus 4 equals to 3x squared minus 2x minus 6x plus 4. That's when we splitted the middle term in step 3. And we also saw that 3x squared minus 2x is equal to x times 3x minus 2. So we write that. That's equal to x times 3x minus 2. We also saw that negative 6x plus 4 equals to negative 2 times 3x minus 2. So we write that as well. That's equal to negative 2 times 3x minus 2. And we now see that 3x minus 2 is a common factor here. So we can go ahead and write all of this in factored form to write 3x minus 2 times all that's left, and that's x minus 2. So we write x minus 2, and we're done. We've just written this quadratic in its factored form by splitting the middle term. There we go, everyone. I really hope that helped, and if it did, please hit like on this video and even subscribe to our channel, because that really does help us. See you soon.